Today's show is sponsored by Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology provides a continuous invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness. Renewing your protection with every wash, get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology available at walmart.com. And Foot Clan, we know it's holiday time. That means holiday parties, holiday cookies, holiday, holiday weight gain, holiday snacks. So look, maybe you've been slacking a little bit and you looked in the mirror and go, it's time. It's time to you work. Say snacking or slacking? Because Slack. I've done both. That's exactly what we've all been doing <laughs> this December. But it's time to get back on with our friends at Echelon. They are the fitness uh Mega empire that you okay. need to check out. They got everything. Look, Echelon is the affordable way to get the workout equipment, the workout community, and an instructor's motivation right in the comfort of your home. With Echelon, you can work out anytime, day or night, crush those fitness goals. They got an app with thousands of live and on-demand classes with great music from your favorite artists. They have certified fitness instructors. They're supportive, engaging, fun. They really know how to get you moving. And Echelon's full range of affordable workout equipment, they've got it all. Stationary bikes, smart rowers, sleek fitness screens, and the auto-folding treadmill. They're all connected to provide the Echelon experience. And right now, for a limited time, our listeners can get up to $800 off MSRP. To get this exclusive podcast discount, text FANTASY to 818181. Text FANTASY to 818181. You're going to get up to $800 off MSRP. Text Fantasy to 818181. Message and data rates may apply. See terms for details. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, it's football time again. It never ends. It will never stop. No, this is week 16. We're looking forward to this. Hey, week 15 is behind us, Mike. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you, God. <laughs> um, oh, gosh. Week 15 is gone. It's championship time. Semi. Cha- semi. Yeah, I mean, I'm on the path. Yeah, okay, yes, 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 yes. On the pathway. And my path goes directly through Al Borland Avenue. Oh. I've got to go right through, and um, that starts tonight. Al and I. Streets closed, buddy. All right. <laughs> You're going to need a detour. <laughs> I, I don't have a choice. I would. It would have been more fun to match you in the, in the finals, but more painful Agreed. for you at that point. Um, no, it'll be a good time. For those of you that survived, and for a lot of you that was like, we did the Spotify green room show yesterday and I asked the question, I was like, give me a thumbs up if you, if you made it through. And there were a lot of like, you know, like three thumbs up, one thumbs down or two thumbs up, one thumb down because you play in more than one league and that was your solace. You survived some of your leagues. Yeah. Hopefully you got some playoffs going. We are joined once again by a cardboard bear extraordinaire, (laughs) Jay Grizz. He's, uh, he, this is playoff time for Jay Grizz right now. Yes, he's got a lot of information about Chicago that he wants to share with everybody. Uh, and I think we have, we've learned one thing, because Jason is, if you've been following the show all week, his house was absolutely bombarded with the flu. Yeah, not good. So we can say this about Jason. He's not Michael Jordan. <laughs> okay, he did. No flu game for Jason? No. No, his, his flu game was uh, sleeping it off. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we were like, are you alive? Lazy. We, are you alive? I mean, we, we, we were talking in Slack. We're trying to get some info from him and crickets yesterday, but he is, do, he's doing better. And the, and the, yeah. and I heard that the kids, the kids are doing better, which is, that's good news as the, yeah. as the big holiday approaches. Well, look, Scotty Pippen's going to carry and that's, <laughs> that's what, uh, the big bear is the Scotty Pippen of the show. So we have a lot to talk about today. News. Which is, I mean, there's a lot of big players and COVID speculation, and we need to figure out who's going to be in there. We have the fantasy forecast. We'll get through some of the matchups, starts of the week, and uh, the boom boom kicker. We're going to let Al deliver the boom boom kicker this week. Oh my! And uh, that's a that's a prestigious honor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's something you want to tell your parents about. It is. I mean, this is the segment that I certainly look forward to all week long. So we do have Never Not Working coming up as well. I want to let people know. 
I know that they're the most successful shirt we've ever sold is the Muth is Luth. Uh, well, because he's Luth. Um, if you go to shopballers.com, we, we have put up the 2021 Foot Clan title gear. So you can get the championship shirts and things like that. The mug. Uh, the mug. Um, so in the coming weeks, you'll need it. And we're going to get a nickname shirt up here soon as well. So the uh, we do a nickname shirt every single year. And that's all at shopballers.com. Let's get it going. Never not working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. We thought about working in a not working segment uh, brought to you by Jason Moore. Yes. but Always um, not working. But he didn't pay for it, so we didn't do that segment. Um, no, he. I can tell you this, though. Seriously, like Jason, it's killing him that he's not here. Yes, it is. He's he's literally like he he thinks he calls us crying all the time. I know. He's like, <laughs> guys, yeah, guys, that, yeah, I'm mo- so sorry. <laughs> he did call into the green room show yesterday. He sounded awful. Um, sounded like that voice. Yeah. All right. Never not working this week because we try to bring you some information that is outside the the norm in fantasy football so that you can get an advantage over your league mates. You know, this year has been a roller coaster. That is for sure. There are a lot of people that are just, you, you certainly cannot rest. You haven't been able to just lock a lineup in or a roller coaster is not a good place for a nap. No. And you, there, there's no way to do that. And I think the two big things that, and, and I'll bring you some information on some trends that are happening here with, with teams in the NFL and with fantasy this year. But the headline to me is is no autopilot and that pride will kill you in fantasy because you have to isolate each week. We, we were talking about this on the Green Room show oh. yesterday and it does you no good to just lock a player into their lineup, into your lineup based on what they did in week four or week five or, or what you paid for them in a trade. Like I brought this up with Al's team. You know, he made some great trades in the middle of the year to pick up certain players. But this week, it, it exists on its own. And so you can kind of kill yourself by just locking players in saying, man, I paid too much for a trade in this. I can't play the waiver wire guy. We're calling this the Tyler Huntley dilemma. Right, right. The Amon Ra St. Brown situation. So, Ooh, good alliteration. <laughs> so, you know, fantasy football is a game about constantly adjusting week to week, no cruise control. Here's something very interesting because – We've brought up recently, like there have been playoff heroes in the past, and Blake Bortles was one of them on a really bad Jacksonville team where you could – San Francisco team. What do you mean? That was the year. That was when Blake was on the 49ers. What? Yeah. Am I remembering that way wrong? You? What are you even talking what? about? Blake Bortles. I'm trying to remember. Maybe, oh, there was the matchup. The matchup was against San Francisco. That's that makes where a I lot was. more sense. Yeah, no, the, the brain, the brain. Uh, That's all right. Week 16. No, I'm glad you cut me off with inaccurate <laughs> information. Um, <laughs> but Blake Bortles was a player that, like, there were a number of teams last over the years where you could count on garbage time, for example. But something really strange has happened over the course of the year. And you felt it when you're watching games. But through the first eight games of the year, teams average 35 pass attempts per game. And the pass rate overall has plummeted since Halloween. I don't know what happened if people got spooked on Halloween, but it's dropped over four pass attempts per game since then. The The defensive scoring is up through the board. Uh, oh, you know, Kansas City's improved. Dallas has been great. Uh, Washington has improved from their first half of the season. And... Listen to this. In the second half of the year, here's the touchdown rate over the last eight games. Only six quarterbacks are averaging two or more passing touchdowns per game. Mm. That's insane. That's boring. That's generally been considered the floor for fantasy, the old 202. Yep. And there's only six quarterbacks that have even averaged that floor. So the bottom has dropped out for a lot of these elite quarterbacks week to week. Mahomes, Dak, we've, the struggles of Dak, Kyler, Lamar. You know, I was looking at fantasy points this morning. Like that that number one quarterback spot is it's like it's highly up, competitive. It's up for grabs. Yeah, Allen is is technically number one right now, but he's eight he's six points up on Herbert. He's eight points up on Brady. And Brady just put up a seven point week. So this was Brady's for the taking. And the other thing that's been very interesting is that you can't really rely on underdogs delivering fantasy points in garbage time. 
because this year, teams like Jacksonville, Houston, the Jets, the Giants, Detroit, Atlanta, Chicago, Seattle, they are routinely not hitting their implied team totals. So even when, you know, the sports books come out and say, we'll think that they're going to get to this mm -hmm. point, right? They're 10 and a half, 11 and a half point underdogs. They're not even doing it. Trevor Lawrence, two passing touchdowns since Halloween. Oh my gosh. So you look at these game scripts with the historical situation saying, well, we're just going to lean into the fact that they're going to be down. They're going to be passing. It's a game script that I'm, I'm going to love. And they're not hitting that point at all. And so I think the adjustment here or the mindset change, and again, you, you may be, this may be something to fuel you moving forward into 2022, is that efficiency can be better than pure volume. And you've seen it with players like Joe Burrow and Jimmy Garoppolo who have very low pass. Those are both run identity teams. Mm -hmm. And yet both of those quarterbacks, you know, Debo and Kittle lead their positions at yards route or yards per route run. So you're getting the value of those completions is high. And Burrow, you know, every week it's a Higgins or a Boyd or a Chase week, and it all goes to Burrow. So you're looking at efficiency metrics. You're not just looking at passing volume and passing attempts. So it's been interesting. It's been different. Um, but at least since Halloween, chasing points on bad teams has not been a good thing. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, and it I, is. And, I, you know, it's not been great for watching football. Because some of these games have been stinkers. A lot. Man, remember, you, do you enjoy a nice 9 nothing game by the Saints and the uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? I I like it as long as I feel like, you know, the the teams are playing well. And it's just, it's not that offenses are, are doo-doo trash right now. It's that, oh, they just, the defense is, everyone is up for this game. And it's just not working out for points. It reminds me of, uh, or... I'm thinking back. Remember uh, the remember Blake the, Bortles on the 49ers. So yeah, got it. Got which it. Which I did look it up, and that that was it was week 16 against the four or 49ers. Okay, okay, at least you were kind of right. Yes, uh, like 20. percent I'll give myself on that one. Uh, at the beginning of the year, we got spoiled by all those incredibly awesome primetime games, and then it set us up for disappointment. Yeah, AKA 2021. <sighs> this the, year. I, I'm disappointed because the other day I was going to tell Al that I really needed the I got a Snake Man drop back on the board because I don't okay. I don't have it. Oh, you don't? It's not there. Well, and so I was like, oh, that's a lie. But that's fine. Carry on. <laughs> Would you? Where is it? Right at the top of your player drops. The second one in. I got a Snake Man. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. All right. I stand corrected. One uh, thing. One thing. Owl will never let slide is. <clears throat> If he thinks he that he has done it correctly, yeah. You no. if if you need somebody to fall on a sword, I'm not your guy. Yes, <laughs> get up to a hundred percent dandruff protection that's never not working with Head and Shoulder Scalp Shield technology available at Walmart.com. It's time for news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. You don't know how many times I've looked for that and not seen it. Just blind. I mean, there, it's a pick. Is it? That's it, because you have twenty thousand buttons over there. I know, I know. But this one does have a picture of a snake at the top, so it's really on me. <laughs> I mean, there is a snake on the button. How will I ever recognize it? All right, Thursday night football updates. Yesterday morning, Elijah Mi Missile himself, not the missile lately, Elijah Mitchell. Well, he's just he, it's preparing, preparing well, he's, to he, fire. He's not firing this week. He's been ruled out. So you have a tough decision with Jeff Wilson. A lot of the questions that I've seen, Mike, have been based on players with injury question marks. For example, Austin Eckler. Added oh, to the reserve no. COVID list officially. People want to know, do you play Jeff tonight or wait on Eckler to be available? And so that to me is based on what other, what third player you have. Sure. Um, to potential like somebody had Rashad Penny, and I was like, "Well, look, Eckler's the number two running back in football, and if he plays, you know that he can still be great on half the snaps." So, if I had Rashad Penny, I think I would wait. Would do you agree with that? Would you wait, not play Jeff tonight, wait on Eckler, and then if Eckler's not there, play Penny? I <clears throat> or would you just start I Jeff? Think, I think I would in that situation in particular. I would play Jeff Wilson. Um, hopefully. As soon as you got the sleeper alert for the official 
Austin Eckler is on the, the COVID list. You went right to your waiver wire or maybe and grabbed Justin Jackson. Maybe the wire hadn't even run because some didn't run till uh, uh, a day later and got Justin Jackson. So, like, if I have Jeff Wilson, Eckler, and Justin Jackson, then I would wait because I believe that if, if Eckler is out, Justin Jackson is equally as good of a play this week as Jeff, if not slightly better because of the matchup. So with Eckler added to the COVID list, I reached out to somebody yesterday and was told that he was vaccinated and that there's a chance he plays. So we're not looking at a limitate, you know. So some investigative reporting? A little bit. I really, I, it was, it's important. This is like fantasy playoffs. I agree. I just didn't know we had sources. Yeah. Yeah, we did. We cool. Did. We had, we had some. Cool, man. Anonymous sources. Yeah. Well, no, I'm not going to share any of my sources with you. <laughs> I mean, you, you can ask me off air. I'll tell you. Okay. Um. Julio Jones. Is it Philip Rivers? It's not. He's not as connected. Oh, dang it. <laughs> hey, believe it or not, they, they locked the doors after he. Um, full practice for Julio. A.J. Brown, the word this morning is like, the word is no word. The word is he's not in. He's not officially out. He is in a stat. He's in a is mist. purgatory? Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the – not at the Act pearly gates. No. Activation of purgatory. The Titans have until 3 p.m. to activate A.J. Brown. My gut feeling on this is that A.J. Brown will not play this week. That's where I'm that's what I'm feeling too, but we'll see. Uh they have till 3 p.m. to activate him. Eckler, we talked about Mixon, full participant at practice. So <sighs> That's good news. Big sigh of relief. If you got Mixon. Lamar didn't practice. Ugh. Based on what we know today, Thursday. Not looking good. Yeah, that's that's bad news of taking the whole week off, missing the game, and not even getting a limited on Wednesday. But because of who Lam Lamar Jackson is the franchise quarterback, he could literally not practice at all. Uh, the and, Aaron Rodgers, and, they call that. And they get to game day, and Lamar says, no, I'm good to go, and Lamar Jackson will play. Pete Carroll said that Tyler Lockett is closing in on being activated from the COVID list. Okay. okay. Antonio Gibson did not practice with the toe injury. So, and it is, it's his big toe again. <laughs> your face, your face says, um, that just, Antonio is not, yeah. I mean, that's just been that, a rough year. That sucks, man. Where we it felt like it was finally going. Antonio Gibson was seeing massive volume. He's getting worked into the, the receiving game. Finally, right. He's putting up huge fantasy points. He's carrying the Washington football team. And then just a, a toe, a toe injury. <laughs> derails the whole thing it's stinks it's it's unfortunate um deandre swift returned to a limited practice jamal williams practice in full so craig craig's gonna have some friends in the backfield darren waller remains sidelined i was wondering like is she just done for the year it's like if waller they, yeah if they get uh eliminated i don't know i mean i, I would imagine they still have to lose like two games to be mathematically eliminated but i don't know i don't know their situation they have six wins if that that's off the top of my head i will pull up their standings yeah no they're i think they're well they just won right so but, they're seven yes. and seven i'm guessing oh yeah yeah that's right yeah. they were six yeah. wins coming into that the game against uh uh mullins <laughs> and then the cleveland browns they they uh squeaked that one out uh but yeah they're seven and seven so they are a uh, they're right in there. They're right in the playoff picture right now. They would need a lot of things to bounce their way, though. The Muth? No. Pat Fryer Muth did not practice. He's recovering from a bad concussion. He's concoothed. Okay. Okay. I was searching for it, and you, and you found it. <laughs> you found it. Um, wow, boo. He's concoothed? I don't know. It's not uh, great. Taylor Heineke. No, it's fine. <laughs> Jay loves it. I'm uh, Heineke's back for Washington. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness. Um, Miles Sanders, DNP. I don't think they practiced, right? They yeah, this was a... Estimated. Yeah, if they were to practice, he would have been and did not practice, but the... It's called a break after Tuesday. Yeah, as, as far as I have seen reports from Philly, as of now, there's no concern Miles missing. When we had that question a while back about playoff heroes... Miles yeah. Sanders was one that was brought up. And yeah. There's a chance. Philly's looking good, man. Yeah, they are. Uh, that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. 
Download the Sleeper app. Join the Breaking Alerts channel. We're about to jump into the matchups. We've got starts of the week. We've got the Boom Boom Kicker all coming up. But first, <laughs> in a world. <laughs> now, we want to thank Wealthfront for supporting the show. And uh, our sponsors and the way that our listeners support them goes a long way to, you know, letting us do what we do. So we want to thank Wealthfront for supporting the show. You've heard all about, I mean, this past year and a half, it's the stonks, it's the memes, it's mm -hmm. the rocket ships and the all the different trading. And look, it's fun and it's exciting. And yet 1% of day traders beat the market. So coming off the street and competing with professionals, it's not a high odds situation for you as an investor. Yeah, they're not saying you can't do it. No, you're, anybody but, can do it in but, your pocket. But uh, odds are, if you're trying to help the, uh, build that sustainable wealth, you might want to have uh, some professionals. Yeah, you it. want you want a team in your corner that knows what they're doing. That's what Wealthfront does. Uh, they create a portfolio of globally diversified low index funds personalized for you in just minutes. I've used Wealthfront for years. They have some really neat features that allow you to kind of tweak how your investments are without doing the individual stock trading. To get your first $5,000 managed for free for life, go to wealthfront.com slash footballers. Wealthfront is trusted with over $20 billion of assets, and you can get your first $5,000 managed free by going to wealthfront.com slash footballers. That's W-E-A-L-T-H-F-R-O-N-T dot com slash footballers to start growing your savings. Go to wealthfront.com slash footballers and get started today. Foot Clan, are you looking to make that house feel just a little bit safer when you're when you're not around knowing that uh, everything is protected and you got somebody watching the place? Simply Safe is here. Our good friends at Simply Safe who have been protecting our office, been uh, protecting Brooks's infinite wealth at his place for uh, generations, really. Darn Jake. right. I think he's armed right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody getting in. No. Ain't no one getting Brooks's wealth. Uh, Simply Safe was named the best home security system of 2021 by U.S. News and World Report. And what's great about them, there's they don't have the long-term contracts or the commitments. It's a really easy way to start feeling out, getting that peace of mind. And right now, they're offering the biggest discounts of the year. And you can get a complete home security system starting at just over $100. If you want to take advantage of this time, take advantage of Simply Safe's holiday deals and get 40% off your new home security system, visit simplysafe.com slash footballers. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash footballers for 40% off your entire system. Fantasy Forecast. I'm forecasting a big Jeff Wilson night over uh, over Al Borland's Debo. Samuel. And is that based off of a statistical argument or just a hope in your heart? That would be in the latter. <laughs> it's the... Um, it's the, I want to go into Christmas with a lead. That's all. I want to go. Sure. I mean, I'm sure Al does too. I do. Yeah. Um, more important probably for your team that Debo has a big game than for my team that Jeff does. I don't know. Yeah, that's accurate. Know. Just stay competitive, Jeff. You can do it. Cleveland at seven and seven. Take on the eleven and three Green Bay Packers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Packers minus seven and a half. They're at home. The over/under is forty-six. But with a line like that that gives the Packers about 27 points, the Browns under 20. Packers are on a roll, 36 points per game over the last four weeks. Uh, the defense has given up more points in that span than they had previously during the year, but uh, giving up points to Baker Mayfield and the gang, it's it's tough to – we haven't seen it. Let's put it that way. Like ever since right. the departure of OBJ, you've had injuries in the backfield – you have a hodgepodge of wide receivers where one week you're looking at Jarvis Landry, the next week it's Donovan Peoples-Jones. Uh, you're rotating through three tight ends. I guess my offensive expectations here are pretty low for the Browns. Yeah, uh, what about uh, uh, with ba Baker, though? He's back, right? Yeah, very low I mean, he should be back soon. Yeah, he should be back. Yeah, he said he feels 100%. They were um, upset you know, when Mullins had to play and he was feeling good. But he'll be he'll be back. But I don't know if I would trust any pass catchers that he's throwing the ball to. Like it, to me, this is this is a simple Nick Chubb and no one else on the Browns. No, you you don't want to you don't want any of those Donovan Peoples Jones targets. 
it's I mean, you can you can give it a go. I guess I'm just going into Lambeau Field, coming off of you know Baker's already beat up, hasn't played. Team hasn't done a lot on offense. Uh, they are oscillating between wins and losses, so I guess this would be the the win side of yeah, things. Yeah, these trends continue. But I think it's Nick Chubb. Are you playing Donovan Peoples Jones? I think he's an okay flex. Just with the... Amon Ross St. Brown or Peoples Jones. Uh, for, for long name battle. Sure. Uh battle of the hyphenated names. I need I need more Jared Goff info. Uh because if, if Jared Goff is back from the COVID IR, I would play St. Brown. <clears throat> okay. On the other side, we've seen efficiency from Aaron Jones. Uh he's been a top ten running back. He's in your lineup. Aaron Rodgers has been on fire. And so the real question to me comes down to AJ Dillon. And would you play him or would you play somebody like Deontay Foreman tonight, Jeff Wilson tonight, Devin Singletary against the pa uh the Patriots? I would play Dillon over Singletary. Uh but the but Jeff Wilson or Deontay Foreman tonight, I'd play those guys. And then uh Alan Lazard. Right now MVS is on the COVID list. Yes. Uh, the the wide receiver too has been doing okay here for the Packers. You don't always know who it's gonna be on any particular uh weekend. MVS feels like the one who has stepped up the most but if he does in fact miss this game because he's on the COVID list it's hard not to see 20 percent of the targets going to Alan Lazard it's a it's a tougher matchup the Browns defense has been stingy against fantasy wide receivers but it's Aaron Rodgers you I don't bet against Aaron Rodgers especially in fantasy football so to me like that's a I think that's an interesting question let's say MVS is out Lazard or Donovan Peoples Jones going with who could maybe be the one for Baker or the two for Rodgers, and I would play Lazard. I would too. I agree with that. By the way, it, these Christmas lights new today, Brooksy, in the studio? Yes, sir. See, I I thought so. I looked, ah. at, I looked at the monitors, and I was like, that looks new, but then I thought I was dumb, and it might have been there all month. But it, you, you got festive. I totally noticed them. Don't people put lights up like before the 23rd of December normally? Yeah, we usually do uh, as okay, well. Okay, that was a sad person over there. Yeah, but we got them. Did you get them up on your house this year? We've got a couple uh, bushes <laughs> lit up out there. <laughs> we went by uh, your neighborhood, Mike, for yes. the first time with the... Uh, there's a house on yes, your block. called sing The Singing House. And man, that place was... That was techno music. That wasn't yeah. even Christmas music. That place was rocking. They they fire up a lot of different jams. They walked out and gave us like candy canes and Wait, what? Yeah, man. What? Yeah, they came right up to the car. What the heck, Mike? You, you never got what any? What are you doing? Where's oh, my candy canes? You called them out by name. No candy canes for you, huh? Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. All right, the Colts at 8 and 6 take on the Arizona Cardinals 10 and 4. 10-4, good buddy. Oh, gosh. Cardinals minus one. That's the DraftKings Sportsbook line. So two I, teams trending different directions, but Arizona still favored. Okay. I'll be there. I'll be at the game. So I'll do my best. Um, Arizona's lost four of six. Still 10-4, and four, but you know they were undefeated when we went into that Thursday night game, and it's been bad since then. Indianapolis, five of six victories. And... 28.4 points per game in that run. This is a nice over-under of 49.5. People are very worried about Kyler Murray. In fact, on Green Room, I don't know if there was a player more frequently brought up than, than Kyler Murray and the thought process of, look, the Colts' defense over the last six weeks, Yes. number four against opposing fantasy quarterbacks, they give up 12.9 points per game. You combine that with Kyler, who's quarterback 13 and 15 the last two weeks, with one touchdown. And you, I know you're worried, right? I mean, you, you are I, concerned about. Yes, I have. I have concern about what can Kyler get done with without DeAndre Hopkins, um, and the running. Like <sighs> Kyler's decision making of when he runs and when he does not is baffling. It, it's baffling at this point because when you watch him on the field, he is <clears throat> he's so quick twitch fast that it seems like. On any given play, he could probably get at least four rushing yards if that was the decision, and yet frequently he decides that he doesn't want to do that, and he throws into double coverage or something, and just 
a, a, an errant pass comes out. So I don't know what's going on there with, with the disconnect of, of the offense. But to compound that, you know, the, the Colts where you mentioned they've been on a pretty strong run here defensively, defensively against quarterbacks. That involves a game against uh, Josh Allen. That involves a game against Tom Brady. They like, yes, they uh, they handled Jacksonville and Houston. Uh, Mac Jones managed to put up an okay game against them, but so it hasn't been scrubs that the Colts have been shutting down. They've they're on an absolute blistering tear right now. Should have been a little better for Kyler last week. Antoine Wesley couldn't get his second foot in on another sure. touchdown pass. James Conner, Pro Bowler James Conner. Top five fantasy running back, James Conner. Congratulations, Conner. I mean, you feel confident playing him in this game? I feel more confident about him than Chase Edmonds. I said this yesterday. I do like Christian Kirk this week. He had 12 targets last week in the first game without Hopkins with Kyler. Uh, A.J. Green is a lazy bum. And <laughs> yeah, If you didn't join Spotify Green Room, ladies and gentlemen, it's I, over. I saw the moment like – Almost as if there was a plane of glass surrounding uh, my co-host and Andrew Holloway, and it just shattered. And his face changed as the glass tumbled upon the ground, and his support for AJ Green it's was over. no longer there. You 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 said it yesterday. You said it right. Where the last remaining AJ Green <laughs> truther is dead. When I saw them last week, Kyler <laughs> threw an interception, and AJ Green decided that he wasn't even going to like. He wasn't even going to make an attempt at, at tackling this player. It was disgusting. It was, ah, I probably can't get him anyways. So I like Christian Kirk. Zach Ertz has been limited with a hamstring, I believe, uh, for two practices this week. He jumps out as like if he's healthy, it yes. could be a very good game for him to the point where I'm like looking at, you know, the Colts have struggled against tight ends all year long. Zach Ertz had 11 targets. Mm -hmm. They're going to need to score. Yep. Kyle Pitts or Zach Ertz, Mike? I would – I'd roll with – I think I'd go with Zach Ertz. Feels that way, doesn't it? I mean, there's there's so limit. Arizona's limited. They don't have Hopkins. Rondale Moore, their rookie. He, he's he hurt got, too. He got banged up in the game. He didn't practice on Wednesday. Seems like he's trending to be out. So, yeah, I would I would play Ertz. Um, on the other side of the ball. Don't you remember <laughs> – The the Michael Pittman week ten and on run has not been good. It has not been good. Um, but again, those that's Buffalo, Tampa Bay. Uh, he had himself a fine game against the Houston Texans, and then the Patriots, where he did see five targets, but he also got then kicked out of the game uh, for right or for wrong. It happened, and so he got knocked out. He couldn't. He only played half of the game. I think Pittman's in a very good spot this week. Now, I'd play Kirk over. Would you? Yeah, I would. That's that's a very close decision for me. Jonathan The question is how badly does Jonathan Taylor destroy the Arizona Cardinals because the, probably pretty bad. The floor is immense destruction. That is like that's the floor. For, oh, that's like the best thing that can happen is an immense destruction of the No, that's the worst thing that could happen for Jonathan Taylor's fantasy week is him destroying the Arizona Cardinals. Best case scenario is he breaks every single NFL record <laughs> this weekend because the Cardinals they're they not can't stop the they're run. not strong against the run and they're not strong against big runs, which a lot of running backs maybe they have enough juice to give you a 10-15 yard carry. If Jonathan Taylor gets a 10-15 yard carry going, he's probably going the rest of the way due to his Hulk-like stamina and strength. So <laughs> So Christmas will be kind to Jonathan yes, Taylor. Yes, I do believe so. But the matchup is – it's also solid. Like, it, it's good for wide receivers, and I don't think everything will go to Jonathan Taylor. I would be playing Pittman back with the, the wide receiver two levels of confidence. The De Moving to the Sunday games, the Detroit Lions at 2-11-1 take on the 6-8 and eight Atlanta Falcons. The DK Sportsbook line, Falcons minus six at home. Is – The over-under is 43 points. I couldn't remember who the Jared Goff backup was. But now I remember. It's Tim Boyle 
the million dollar man who's just out there cashing big checks. So wait, Tim Boyle's the one that was the two touchdowns to thirteen interceptions yes. in yeah, the college. One, the one where we have no real idea how he's a backup in the NFL. Uh, but the Detroit Lions wanted to give him a whole bunch of money. And he had the opportunity this to is, I'm not saying it's money laundering, but I'm not, started, not saying that. He started one game this year. And um How'd that go? Two picks, no touchdowns. What? So guess we'll see what happens. Jared Goff is on the COVID list. So that's why his name's being brought up. Dan Campbell got it done last week, thirty to twelve over the Cardinals. Atlanta is 0 and five at home this year. This could if as long as it's golf, this could actually be an entertaining game and a game that has real sneaky fantasy upside. Uh, I'm not playing the quarterbacks. I don't have that level of confidence, but like Cordero Patterson, he should crush this yeah, week. Yeah, I love him this week. He should he should destroy the Detroit Lions. Uh, Russell Gage has been top 12 uh, you know, in three of his four uh, last four weeks. He has emerged into Nightwing, as we discussed earlier on the show. He's not a Batman, but he can get it done for for fantasy. He's trying trying to get a solo album. Yeah, out there. he's he's trying to get that movie. Right. We're gonna get a Nightwing movie. Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. But he can try. Yeah. Self produced. And, and then Kyle Pitts. He's in a like everyone is in a great situation in this game. Kyle Pitts is uh, what, like forty seven yards away from Jeremy Shockey for the second best rookie. Yardage total ever. Okay. Um, he's about 220 yards from the all-time record set by Mike Dicka. So that he, one seems unrealistic, but... I don't know. He's he got could get there. I mean, he's he's got three games to do it. Why not try Atlanta? There's nothing else you need to do. Get this man, the pro bowler Kyle Pitts, get him this record, and uh, <clears throat> do it this week against Al Borland. <laughs> So yeah, I, this game I'm with you on that. I would take the over. I don't. I, I think that's a too low. That yeah. line might be that low because of the Jared Goff situation. Sure, but I would take the over. You might be getting DeAndre Swift back now. Confidence in playing him, it's not high. No. If I had to bet right now on the situation, based on what I know, I think it'd be Jamal Williams and Craig Reynolds. I think Swift might sit again. Do you have? Do you I have, do not have the courage to play Craig Reynolds. Uh, no, in that so do you have the courage to play Jamal Williams? Sure. Coming off of the COVID, he's missed two games now from COVID, and the team, at least uh, vocally, are very supportive of Craig Reynolds. Who, if you look at yeah, like uh, the PFF metrics, Craig Reynolds is like the number one, number one running back of the last two weeks, which are the only two games he's played. He's been dominating. Yeah. It's it's just it. Well, look, Atlanta's defense is, is not good. Yeah, I agree. But I think that the running game will get shut down if Tim Boyle's behind center. So my confidence on starting any of those – anybody, including Amon Ross St. Brown, I am not playing him with Tim Boyle. Agreed. And so it's all – you know, Josh Reynolds has been very good as well with Jared Goff. So everything changes if Goff is active. Um, But if the, if the backfield's not clear on game day, I'm going to pivot somewhere else. I don't blame you. The Baltimore Ravens at eight and six take on the eight and six Cincinnati Bengals. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here: Bengals minus three over unders forty five and a half. Cincinnati beat them up in week seven. I don't know if that's going to happen this week. Oh no! Andy's almost upset of the week. I know there's question marks around the the quarterback position, but it's not the quarterback position that I am worried about with Cincinnati. It is, it's, um, do they have clutch? Do they got what it takes at the end of the year with the division on the line to beat a division rival that has had their number for years? And so Joe Burrow and company, it wasn't impressive on offense last week. It was one play. Their offense was one play to Tyler Boyd. And that was enough in that game. But I don't think it's going to be a 41 to 17 whooping like week seven. Tyler Huntley brought, this team to the brink against a very good Packers team. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't know. I'm excited about this game. I'm not saying it's not going to be competitive, but I, I, I just, I don't know. I like Baltimore. I love Cincinnati and okay. I, I love their offense. Do you want to fight about it? You want box? Let's go. Well, yeah, we'll take it outside. All right, let's go. <laughs> 
I'll, I'll take my shirt off. I'll do it. Uh, uh, Burrow, uh, the Baltimore Ravens defense is uh, it's a pass funnel essentially. Like they can they can stop the run. Over the last six weeks, they are third against fantasy running backs, and yet twenty fourth against quarterbacks, twenty seventh against wide receivers. Like that's where you beat them, and I I just I I. The way I see this shaking out is T. Higgins is a strong start. Jamar Chase is a strong start. I, If I've got Joe Burrow and I'm looking at other fringe options where Joe Burrow has kind of been a a, a shaky fantasy start, you're never really sure if you should put him in or, or not, I would be playing him with full top 10 confidence this week. I think that he's going to have a monster game. You okay with Chase and Higgins this week then? Because the, yes. Baltimore has given up so many points to wide receivers – yeah, the question is, do you want to chase Tyler Boyd's points? And the answer to that is no, not really. Or Boyd Jamar Chase's points? Hmm? <laughs> no, never mind. Oh, I, was, um, I did not get Lamar the Jackson and Tyler Huntley. Do you trust Tyler Huntley with the one-game smash sample? <laughs> and, you know, they were in a bad game script. They had to battle back. They were given right. a lot of the, uh, you know, the passing game was working late in the game. Huntley scored twice on the ground. Does this like where is your courage level with Tyler Huntley compared to other options this week? Because it, it is it's steadily rising. He was a, a pretty hot topic of debate on the Spotify green room. What did I say? I just thought I caught a V in there, like a debate. Oh, oh you're well, good. Go on. Well, you you you've interrupted me. I, you've interrupted no, the flow. No, I just made a face. You didn't have to draw attention to it. <laughs> but you, I must call attention to your face at all times. Stop debating out there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Brooks. Thank you. Uh, Matthew I, Stafford, I Matthew Stafford uh, against Minnesota, or do you go with Tyler Huntley? That one I'd go Stafford. Okay. Uh, it's because Stafford just is a locked and loaded supreme fantasy play, especially against Minnesota. But here's the thing to look at for, for Tyler Huntley. We've seen him in uh, essentially close to three full games, two full games and one where he was in for 86% of the snaps. He has rushed for no fewer than 40 yards in those contests, including 13 carries for 73 yards, two rushing touchdowns. Now, the rushing touchdowns may not come. That's just a that's an upside product of a quarterback who's going to run it seven plus times. And that's so safe for fantasy football. I've been over here, you know, talking up Taysom Hill is a feels like a a, a safe floor fantasy quarterback, not great through the air. Doesn't have good passing weapons, but he's still worth playing in fantasy because he runs. And then you have Tyler Huntley, who is incredibly dynamic on the ground. Seems like he's a, a competent passer, and he actually has great weapons. Mark Andrews is uh, just a towering inferno these days. Of You cannot stop him. And then the matchup for a tight end, over the last six weeks, the Bengals, 32nd. That's that, dead last. That will be Tyler Huntley's number one option. And then on top of that, you have uh, Hollywood Brown, who they just need to connect one time uh, on a big play for it to pay off for fantasy. So, yes, the my confidence in Tyler Huntley is, is rapidly rising here as it looks like Lamar Jackson might be trending out. 14 targets for Hollywood. Yeah. 10 catches, only 43 yards. So a little different types of targets with Tyler Huntley and protecting him. Hasn't scored since week seven. So Hollywood confidence is there, though? Yeah, I would still play him. I think he's playing against me. No running backs from Baltimore, right? Yeah, after the uh, Latavius Murray has kind of he's started to siphon off a little bit more work the past couple weeks, uh, I would be moving away from that. The Rams at 10-4 and four take on the 7-7 seven and seven Minnesota Vikings. The DK Sportsbook line, Rams minus 2.5. Over-under is 49. They're on the road. Somehow Minnesota has achieved uh, 13 to 14 games being just one score. <laughs> the one score games. Minnesota Vikings. That's insane. They they morph into whoever they're playing. Like that's as good as they are. Like a chameleon. Yeah, I was gonna or like, go, a, like they yeah. mirror the the opposition. Yeah, I was gonna. Hmm. I was thinking of like Rogue, but Rogue takes people's powers. They don't just become the other person. <laughs> uh, but they just they play to the level of their competition. And that's kind of a you know a cliche thing to say, but thirteen of fourteen games, one score. 
They well, are no better. They are no worse than their opponent. You have to love the passing game for the Rams because Minnesota yes. doesn't stop it well. They're dead last against wide receivers over the last six weeks. Oh, and the year. So this is a very consistent theme. What they just they just kind of they cut Brashad Breeland last week, which yeah, he's been awful. But your your secondary has been in desperate need of help. And you know, so so Beckham, Cup, Van Jefferson, They're Stafford, all Sony Michelle, who looked great. I bench Henderson and I I don't know if I touch Tyler Higby. That's Tyler Higby is like the only question of this game for me because the cup is locked in and then Beckham and Van Jefferson, I believe, are both strong wide receiver three type plays who it's not a guarantee that they hit, but the matchup dictates that both of the, like all three wide receivers could have huge games. But Tyler Higby, <laughs> who really hasn't come through, like do we have any – he missed, two, he missed two straight games, so I I think you just nine has been his ceiling. I don't think you mess with him this yeah, week, and I, I don't think you mess with Conklin on the other side. The Conklin's been awful. You know, one catch for seven yards last week, two for twenty the week before, hasn't scored since week ten. Like, just don't do it. And then, you know, Justin Jefferson is and Dalvin Cook are locked into your lineup. What do you do with Cousins, and what do you do with Thielen if he happens to return? <sighs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I would say there is a chance that Thielen comes back. The timeline still doesn't make sense to me for the injury, but he was out there uh, pregame warming up, trying to give it a go, and that before they ultimately ruled him out, which that could that could happen again. Oh my! If Adam Thielen plays, I I would play him. Okay. All right. Uh, he's just the the touchdown up, upside is there. Forty nine and a half point over under. Yeah, I don't mind that. Buffalo at eight and six take on the New England Patriots, who are nine and five. The DraftKings Sportsbook line has the Patriots minus two and a half. Over under is forty three and a half. I think Buffalo wins this one. Oh my! You're getting spicy I know, today. I think Buffalo's going to win. Um, New England beat them thirteen to ten on Monday Night Football. So that's that game doesn't count because of the the because the game infinite. was when, Mac Jones threw the ball three times. Like that, right. that, that game, yes. Forty three and a half though is not a huge over under. No, and so you know you you're not gonna like what pivot options would you ever have for the number one quarterback? I mean, Josh Allen is still number one. You're gonna have to play him in New England last year. He smoked him. Won't have Beasley. Very different. Probably won't have Sanders. Very different defense for the Patriots last year. But, I agree. But point is taken that I'm not. If I have Josh Allen, he's He's come through more often than than not, and his upside is is weak winning, so I would play him. Let me ask you a difficult question about the running back room in New England. Damian Harris was limited two straight days of the hamstring issue. Ramondre Stevenson missed practice due to a, an illness. He looked like a strong play last week because the previous time he had the backfield to himself, he was a 20-plus yeah. scorer. Game script didn't go the direction that we needed it to. Are you, you know, Harris, is he locked in over Ramondre if he's active? I'm going back to the the flow chart, the New England Patriots flow chart that says if Damien Harris is active, I will play him. Well, let me, let me let me color that in then. Okay. Because I think the highest likelihood is that both players are active. Sure. And, the, and in that situation against Buffalo, who has really struggled on the ground recently, to you, Damian Harris, yes. To Damian Harris <laughs> and everybody else. But do you play – like they were so good in the beginning of the year against the run and they just stopped doing that. But do you play Harris in that kind of situation, the committee, or do you play Jeff Wilson or Deonta Foreman or even like a Jarrett Patterson if he was alone? Uh, I mean, the the problem for Harris and or, – or, I'm sorry, for uh, Wilson and Foreman, they go tonight. Like you won't you won't have the luxury of knowing. That's what I mean. Like if you if you're guessing Oh, that, okay, I see what you're saying. If you're guessing that they're together, which I think is likely. Harris has looked good in practice and Ramondre was just an illness. So I think both will be active. If you aren't stashing both players, like if you just have one of them and you have Jeff Wilson or Foreman, you could, I would personally go with Wilson or Foreman. You would, I, yeah, even I mean, against the Buffalo D that struggled so much. Yeah, because I just I don't know who's going to be active with Harris limited uh, in practice. If he if he is active, I I have to believe he's good enough to go. And 
if he is active, then Stevenson is just the backup. Maybe Harris, you know, leaves the game because of the hamstring, and then Stevenson becomes a strong play. But there's just there's way too many question marks for me where there is clarity for Jeff Wilson and Foreman. This feels like a tempered expectation game sure. across the board. Like even with Josh Allen, like the pressure the Patriots are putting on the quarterback and then what they're doing in the secondary versus I, I just worry about ceiling for anybody here. Devin Singletary's the guy. We know that now in Buffalo, but he's going to have to get it done through the passing game. He he is the guy as of, you know, the last couple weeks in terms of snaps. Two weeks ago it was 82% of the snaps. Not a ton of work except for seven targets. Uh, and then this last week against Carolina, that's where he saw 23 opportunities, which is by far his his highest uh, opportunity share of the season. He would be showing me he is the guy on my bench. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, I get it. <laughs> and then, like, if he is the guy again, then uh, then maybe next week against the Atlanta Falcons, I'll take the chance. Diggs is in your lineup. Yes. But do you go with Gabriel Davis after last week, or yes. any Patriot wide receiver? Is it Gabe Davis over all of them? Yes, it would be. And then COVID be uh, COVID Beasley. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> that that was one hundred percent accidental. <laughs> I mean, it says Cole Beasley COVID list on my notes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so we're gonna move on, but uh, he's not gonna be there. Dawson Knox at the uh, disappointing week last week. If he had uh, gotten to double digits, I would be moving on in Dynasty, so I'm I'm bummed out. Do you play Dawson Knox this week against the Patriots, or do you play Zach Ertz? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, shoot, I think I would play Ertz. I'd play Ertz over Knox this week. Knox or Pitts? Mm. <laughs> that one's tough. Uh Knox has just been such a touchdown machine. I would play Pitts. I th I'm scared about this game. Yeah, I I think what it would come down to floor for like both of them have tremendous ceilings. Uh, I think the probability of Dawson Knox approaching his ceiling is a higher probability than Kyle Pitts. But at this point in this game, Dawson Knox's floor is devastatingly low. Where I don't think where Kyle Pitts, if he disappoints you, it's because he's the tight end nine or tight end ten. Jacksonville at two and twelve take on the New York Jets three and eleven. It's a pick 'em game. The over under is forty one. Can you pick neither? Um, yes, you could. Number one versus the number two pick in the draft. Touch, oh, yeah. touchdown rate one point eight percent to one point nine percent, and which uh, is almost zero percent, which is how I feel about the game. On the on the surface, I agree with you. It looks just nasty and disgusting, but just like last week of Jacksonville and Houston, because the defenses allow points, there's fantasy goodness to uh, to scrape out of this matchup. This is bad offenses versus bad defenses, <laughs> and something's got to give, but predicting that seems really difficult. James Robinson, it's a smash play. The Jets yes. just give up tons of points on the ground. Yep. See, Duke Johnson. But, look, you look at the passing game for Jacksonville. Trevor Lawrence doesn't throw touchdowns anymore. Marvin Jones shares with Laquan Treadwell down the field. I mean, that's been happening. I don't – I'm not messing around with anybody else. I'm not I'm not flexing Marvin Jones. I'm not flexing Laquan Treadwell. I'm not, I'm not playing O'Shaughnessy or Dan Arnold. I am not touching the passing game. Uh, I can understand wa wanting to go with that, but if you had to make a decision – uh, Laquan Treadwell has had just a, a very sound foundation of at least four receptions and 50 yards. Like that's – It's been uh, happening every even yes. after the departure of uh, Urban Meyer. Right, and the ceiling doesn't exist. I I will uh, say that, that that is there, but in terms of you're desperate, you need a wide receiver three flex play off of your waiver wire, Laquan Treadwell – feels pretty locked into that four and 50 range and James O'Shaughnessy 
which this is TBD. Uh, uh, Dan Arnold, the postman, was designated to return. We'll see if he is actually active or not. But James O'Shaughnessy, in terms of of a streaming option, the matchup is good. Jack, uh, the Jets are 25th on the season against fantasy tight ends. And then last week, James O'Shaughnessy, uh, you know, 11% of the targets, 16 the week before, 21% the, uh, the week before. Not so all targets are created equal. I – I definitely agree, but if you need a tight end, that's just gonna like. This is like the we I'm talking just, about Nick Vanette. I'm last just week. waiting for you to stop talking about James Lashonis. I will that's never. All, that's all I'm waiting for. I on this will show. never. I'll do anything. I'll even talk about Braxton Berrios if I have to. No, I don't want to talk about him. James Crowder. He didn't practice. He's not been good. Don't mess with him. Yeah. Um, but they don't have anybody else. They're they're out. They're pretty much out, and so. It's going to be Braxton Berrios and Keelan Cole, and that's – please stay away from this game. Michael Carter's on the COVID list. Oh, is he? He only had 10 opportunities right. last week. I'm not messing with him either. Yeah, gotcha. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Okay. The Giants – But who's going to win the game? Nobody. We all lose. <laughs> the Giants at 4-10 and 10 take on the 7-7 seven and seven Eagles. The DK Sportsbook line Eagles minus 10. Over-unders 40.5 points. It gives the Eagles 25. The Giants – at 15, the Eagles are one of my favorite defenses this week. I don't see how the Giants – my biggest concern in this game is competition. If the Giants can't compete on offense in any way, shape, or form, which will be Mike Glennon and Jake Fromm in some ensemble, right, some tandem, and if they can't compete, then Jalen Hurts doesn't have to throw the football. And if he doesn't have to throw the football, then expectations for Devontae Smith, who struggled fantasy-wise, and even Dallas Goddard go down. Now, I'm playing Goddard because he's been outstanding, but Devontae Smith's the real question mark to me because it's so difficult to have confidence when I think Jalen Hurts is going to run the ball 10 times, when Miles Sanders is going to get it 20 times, when they're going to share. You know, they don't have to do a lot. And around the goal line, he's not looking to Devontae Smith. He's just running the football in. I mean, he's got double the amount of of uh, inside the five carries of any quarterback in football. Yeah, he's been fantastic for – for fantasy, we do have a quick update here, Andy. You got tricked. All right, it's the other Michael Carter for the Jets, who's on the COVID list. Wait, well, why did our notes say that then? No, they, they on the right it oh, says cornerback. cornerback. Why can't you read? Why would I have any information about a <laughs> cornerback in here, <laughs> Kyle? This is the most useless information ever. He didn't want to confuse you, so he in fact confused you. I wouldn't. How would I have been confused? <laughs> the only note on the COVID list is about a cornerback. Named Michael Carter. This is some of your worst work ever, Kyle. Uh, so back to the Eagles. Jalen Hurts locked in. I love Miles Sanders this week. They have uh, the Eagles have shown a commitment to the run, and Miles Sanders. We weren't sure if it would have to be or not have to. If we weren't sure it would be him as the primary guy, but it in fact was. So I'm going to roll with that. And Dallas Goddard, man, that was it was great to see Dallas Goddard have a a back-to-back -back fantastic week, and it wasn't Gardner Minshew. It was Jalen Hurts hooking hooking Goddard up with nine targets, and that turned into seven for 135. Like I, I, I like Goddard a lot this week. I may play Goddard over like Kyle Pitts this week. Yeah, I would too. Okay. Yeah, Goddard's just too reliable and too important, and too much a part of like. The kind of offense that is safe and will get you a victory over the Giants, which is the way that the Cowboys played last week. But Miles Sanders, love him. Yep. Uh, Saquon on the other side, I mean, he's averaging 20 opportunities a game. But at the end of the game, he's still on the Giants. And so these opportunities have not been great. He's volume-based RB2, in my opinion. Yep. Kenny Galladay? Nope. A disaster of a season. Yeah. He's got as many touchdowns as Al Borland and uh, Judge Giamatti combined. Mm. Both producers. Mm. So please, please stay away. You guys want to do some starts of the week? Yes, please. Save Can us. We please do that. Starts of the week. My start of the week at the quarterback position is Matty Snapback. Matthew Stafford, Los Angeles Rams quarterback. Been a top 12 quarterback four times since the week 11 bye. The secondary for Minnesota is not a good, and they're terrible against fantasy quarterbacks. Cooper Cup is unstoppable, and then if you do try to stop him, he has weapons with Van Jefferson and Odell Beckham. 
and the game's got the highest total of the week, which is 49 points. We don't even have a 50-point over-under this week. Yeah. My quarterback starter, it's Joe Burrow. He gets the Ravens. He was the quarterback, too, on the road the last time that they played. And, uh, look, in the last eight games, everyone not named Baker Mayfield, they're having great fantasy games against the Baltimore Ravens. Burrow has uh, the third highest touchdown rate in football. That's tied with Thomas Brady, the second highest yards per attempt, and Baltimore allowing the most 20-plus yard pass plays. That is a recipe for T. Higgins and Jamar Chase to have a fine day and take Joe Burrow into the top 10. All right, my running back start of the week. It's going to be a redemption game for Cordero Patterson. Um, this is Detroit. Detroit's run defense, not good. 137 rushing yards per game on the road this year. Um, Cordero is averaging 93 yards from scrimmage per game at home. He's too important to the offense. And so I think, you know, he's a player that is a fantasy MVP for a lot of people. And sure. I think he's going to give you a fantasy MVP performance in the playoffs. That would be fantastic. I got Miles Sanders as my start of the week. If you traded for him, if you held on, I think that you will be rewarded. He looks like he is the man. And over the last two months, only Miami has failed to have big running back production against the New York Giants. The Giants allowing the seventh most rushing yards and nearly six running back receptions per game. Miles, I think, is safe floor and has upside this week. Well, you're not going to like me, but I'm going DK Metcalf <laughs> at the wide receiver position. Oh, man. Um, the final curse. The Bears are allowing the ninth most fantasy points to wide receivers. They've given up humongous plays this year. And, look, it wasn't that bad for DK last week. You're 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 missing the touchdowns. That's what you're missing with DK. Yeah, I mean, he just put up, like, you know, Laquan Treadwell stat line. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. But he also had the, you know, if you watch the game as methodically as I did, I would say about 75% of the time, maybe 80% of the time, he was lined up with Jalen Ramsey on that game. Still beat him for what should have been a touchdown. Um, if DK doesn't get into the end zone this week, I don't know. I we, might, we, I might we, voluntarily spin the wheel of we revolt. shame. Yeah, I don't know. We revolt as fantasy players. I think he's going to score. I, I think so. Yeah. He... He should have himself a game. My wide receiver, I want to give you some confidence to play, is Van Jefferson. The Vikings are the premier wide receiver matchup, as we've, we've kind of highlighted. And before the bad week 15, he had a string of three solid fantasy games, some wide receiver twos that have had good performances against the Vikings. Claypool, Ayuk, MVS, Bateman, uh, Cedric Wilson. Look, Van Jefferson, he's not for every lineup, but I think he is the perfect flex play for an underdog team that needs someone that has high variance built into their output because Van Jefferson, like this week, it could be three receptions for 90 and two. Like that's that could happen this week. Rob Gronkowski is my tight end start grunk, of the week. Grunk, grunk, 11 grunk. targets last week. Brady's going to need him badly. And, you know, he's, he's, he's combined. You know, he was a good tight end for the majority of this year, and now you combine it with the necessity for Tom Brady against Carolina – um, you're talking eight to 12 targets for Rob Gronkowski in a fantasy playoff matchup. So, and he leads all tight ends at his age in average depth of targets. So he's a downfield threat for them. Did it, you say at his age for Rob Gronkowski? Yeah. Yeah. Well, cause he's like a thousand years old, isn't he? That's what I mean. Oh, my point is despite the fact he's at yes. that age, he somehow leads all these young tight ends in average depth of target. Like, it takes him longer to get to that depth of target. That's oh, what I'm saying. I understand. And it still happens. So you're getting high value targets is my point. Touchdown opportunities. Gronk's my start of the week. He could probably run faster if he wasn't like saying Gronk, Gronk, Gronk. Right, or, or the 11 knee braces. <laughs> Just in a suit of armor out I there. I mean, it's like a segue down <laughs> below there. Uh, let's see. Uh, my tight end, my deep. Oh, you psychopath. All right, look. I know you've been going this well. You've been going deeper. I've been um, with these starts the starts of the week in the playoffs. I'm trying to give people some lower tier players that I actually have confidence in this week, and it is Cole Komet of the Chicago Bears. The Seattle matchup has been juicy for tight ends, and since Week Nine, like Cole Komet has been seeing 20 percent of the targets, three top 10 finishes in that time. I get it. Since Week Nine, that's not a lot, but he he is necessary to this offense. He seems to have a connection already with the young quarterback, Justin Fields. The matchup, 
actual touchdown regression is in his favor as he has none, but he has a yardage total that suggests he should have multiple touchdowns. So I like him as a, a streaming option if you're desperate this week. All right. Uh, rankings starts at two. It's all on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Jason's not here today, so we've volunteered Al Borland to be the boom, boom kicker reader of the day. Now, just, just a reminder before I start this segment, last week – the summary is basically this. Jason got hungry, and he ate a whole churro factory. Is that what happened? <laughs> I, I guess so. Something like that? All right, let's begin. Jason Moore's ironclad, locked and loaded, 100% guaranteed boom, boom, kicker of the week. Powered with sugar, I became even surer that early onset diabetes would ruin my belly, but I morphed into muscle, ready for an epic tussle with a final boss kicker named Jake Elliott. Look, I, I got to give you a lot of credit. That's not an easy read. Yeah, I read it like right before we started, and I was like, <laughs> I don't know that this is coming out right. I can't believe you got through it so well. Belly butt rhyming with Elliott. <laughs> He went belly butt Ellie Ut. Yeah, that is correct. Wow, wow. he is a master with words. Yes. Yeah, true words. Well, Dayquil's doing work. The true uh, wordsmith. A, a true a Dickens of our time. Mm, something like that. All right, that'll do it for today's show. We want to thank pristineauction.com. dot uh, com. A T Higgins signed jersey's current auction price as of this moment is six dollars and thirty cents. So that auction ends tonight. You can pick up a, a Van Jefferson signed jersey. It's at $26 right now. There's always really great deals. You can outfit your office or, or your, your house or both, whatever. You can make give some amazing gifts as well. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit. We'll be back tomorrow with the rest of the matchups. And guess what? Mike gets to spin the wheel of shame. Five point nine. Uh, enjoy the game tonight, Foot Clan. Good luck. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.